forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer. Why do you need forgiveness? From an invisible mass murderer. Why do I need forgiveness? from an invisible mass murderer. And then the little Christian's like, why do I need forgiveness? And then this Don, whatever, Don Baker, I believe it was, it's like, from an invisible mass murderer. <laughs> oh boy, Mr. Baker, you're thinking pretty highly of yourself, don't you? <laughs> Hello. Well, listen, this one is for you atheists out there. Okay, a theist. A theist. Look at me. You do believe in a God. Yes, you do. You say, no, I don't. Yes, you do. It's very arrogant for you to tell me what I believe. You do believe in a God. Yourself. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You lie. You lie and your breath stink. And I can smell it all the way over here. You do believe in a God. You are your own God, Mr. Atheist. Over the years, I've had <laughs> quite a few correspondence with atheists. Um, in a general sense, I tend to be a little bit more lenient with these atheists than these Christians. Okay, I have encountered atheists where we have had, you know, correspondence before, and it, it comes out eventually, it's like, well, I just don't believe in the God you are telling me of. I know that! You know that I know, and I know that you know that I know that I know that you know. We know that! And hey, if you can get an atheist to at least say, well, I just don't believe in your God. Who is the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, who is uh, given to us in the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? All right? But um, we're going to be talking about this thing that is a very, actually, a common thing that gets thrown at the saints by the atheists. Well, God is, your God is a mass murderer. And right away, such a statement from the, for, for the saints ought to be like, oh, wow, you think pretty highly of yourself, don't you? Seeing, see, what is being, what is behind such a question? That man is better than God because the inference is that man wouldn't commit genocide. Oh, Rwanda? Well, I, th I believe it was Rwanda, right? What about the Holocaust? What about the millions murdered by Christians? Brad, what are you talking Catholics! Hey, I, by the way, okay, three minutes. I'm not a Christian. I don't claim to be. I'm a saint of the Church of the Living God. Okay, there's a big difference. But see, the atheist associates... What is Christian onto what? Catholic. Because when you ask people, it's like, well, what is a Christian? Someone that believes on in Christ. Right. Which one? What Christ are you talking about? They will describe to you more often than not the Christ given to you from Rome, who is not the Christ Jesus, God the Father of the authorized version. Okay? All right? But we're going to be addressing this arrogant and pompous statement. Why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? And see, the underlying thing is that man is superior to God. Okay? That got your attention? Huh? Mr. Atheist? You do believe in the God? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay? You do. Yourself. Okay? I have had several of you atheists that are like, no, I don't. But yet, 
you talk to them and you give them some of the scriptures that we are going to look at, and they do the, well, I don't believe in, in your, they call it a Bible, this, it's actually the scriptures. Well, I don't believe that. Well, that doesn't really matter, does it? Because, see, when you die, Mr. Atheist, you're going to stand before the one that you claim you don't believe in, and you believe in yourself. You are your own God. And you're going to stand before the one that you rejected all your life. Ugh, don't want to be in their shoes. But, if you have an authorized version of the scriptures, I would invite you to go ahead and pick it up and follow me along at the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. And you know, you atheists, it's like, well, prove to me there is no God without the scriptures. Well, he lives within me, and I give testimony by the way I behave according to the scriptures, okay? But see, I'm going to tell you right away. <laughs> and it's like, well, you can't prove to me anything about your God without the scriptures. Have you ever run into that one before? <laughs> no, I've done is like, <laughs> it's exactly this. <laughs> okay. Hey, you, hey, look. You don't want to hear the truth. I, I get that. That's fine. Okay. All right. I'm. I'm. Okay. All right. Bye bye. And then they were. Some of them resort to the uh, schoolyard tactic. You can't do it because you can't. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> bye, little boy. Bye bye. Good luck at the great white throne of judgment, you, you heathen. Okay. All right. Remember, brethren, we don't have to answer all these questions. And let them do their little childish, little schoolyard antics of, you can't answer it because you know you can't answer it. Go away, little child. Go ahead. Go play with your little friends on the schoolyard and do whatever you got to do. Okay? All right? But please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, of what we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay? If you have a question about the context, pause the video and be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? And also, too, do follow me along because sometimes when I get to going, the mouth will go quicker than the brain. And sometimes I will skip a groove, mispronounce pronunciation, that kind of stuff, and I get corrected by brethren in the comment section. Okay, so, Psalm 50. Psalm 50. <laughs> you don't want to hear uh, anything from the scripture, atheist? It's like, okay, you and I have nothing to talk about then. Then go away. All right? Go away. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, atheist, you, you believe in evolution over uh, in a galaxy far, far away, millions and trillions of years ago, huh? All right? See, you try to prove that there isn't a God without your little fallacy religion of evolution. Okay? Anyway, Psalm 50, verse 7 on to verse 21. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. And Paul in the New Testament says, is he only the God of the Jews, the Hebrew, uh, Hebraic people? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Okay. There's that quote from the movie um, Braveheart, you know, by that rabid, insane Catholic guy, Mel Gibson. There's a part in that movie where the character, the uh, William Wallace, is standing before, uh, not standing before the king, but the, like basically an inquisition. And the character guy, uh, Mel Gibson, says, Never in my holy life have I sworn allegiance to him. And then the guys say, It matters not. He is your king. Now that's in a Hollywood movie, but that's actually a statement of truth in a way. Why? 
Because Mr. Atheist, Mr. Muslim, Mr. Buddhist, Mr. Charismatic, Mr. Catholic, okay? When you die, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, God who is the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to stand before him, okay? So your belief in that respect alone is irrelevant. He is your king. He is your God. And you are going to give an account to him. That don't mean you're saved and going to heaven. No, 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 no. What it means is your belief on such is irrelevant because you are going to give an account to him when you die. Okay? Your belief on that is irrelevant. You are going to give an account to Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, if you are of him, a saint of the church and living God, you're going to give an account of yourself at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Anything after that, it's the great white throne. Okay? But let's continue. Okay? I will not, verse 8, I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. He's saying, I'm God. Okay? He, he created us out of dirt. Man was created by God. God was not created by man, Mr. Atheist. Okay? All right? If I were hungry, I would not tell thee because God does not need us. Okay? For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. This belongs to him. And then the atheist, well, look what's happening. Well, that's because God has given man free will. See, God doesn't want a robot. Dear atheist, dear Calvinist, okay? Man has been given the liberty to choose. Yay or nay, okay? It's called free will, all right? That was evident in the Garden of Eden, okay? More on that in a bit. Well, let's continue. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Rhetorical. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, those who hate the Lord, who are against him, and actively, openly do everything contrary to him. Okay? But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? See, thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Don't want to hear I don't. Prove to me your God without the scriptures. Hmm. See, and see, what they want to do is they want to try to disarm you. Okay? But see, we as saints, it's like, uh, that's not going to happen, buddy. This is how, this is how you may know, know that ye have eternal life. This is how you may know the true God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Okay? This is it. Okay? You don't want... Hey! Atheist, and I've encountered this. It's like, look, I'll talk to you, but I don't want to hear anything from the, your, the Scriptures. They say Bible. I don't want to hear anything from the Scriptures. Well, then you and I aren't going to talk about nothing. Okay? A majority, when you say take that stance, they will act like a little kid, a little bully on the schoolyard. And they'll be like, well, you can't do it. Nah, 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 nah. It's like, hey, fine, whatever, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Grow up. Oh, you're how old? Oh, 53 years old. And you're acting like you're still on a schoolyard. Okay, bye-bye, Mr. Atheist. Okay? All right? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go, go, whatever. Okay? Let's continue. Seeing 
thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, and a thief is someone who boots the door and climbs up some other way. Okay? When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. And here we go. Verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Silence, excuse me. Okay? Because God wants all people today, especially, to come to repentance. We're getting ahead of ourselves. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You thought that, you see, that's the thing with the atheists. They want to bring God down to the level of a mere man. And yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, God is manifest in the flesh. Yes. But, dear friend, remember this flesh itself is not God. Okay? Flesh is dirt. Okay? Okay? God created man. Okay? And see, that's the thing with you atheists. You think that God is like you. Hence, you think you're superior to God. And see, you atheists who say you don't believe in it, I don't believe in a God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You lie. And your breath stink. Okay? I can smell it through the computer. Okay? In Genesis 3, verse 5. Okay? Satan lie unto Eve. Okay? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This, that was Genesis 3, verse 5. Okay? Ye shall be as gods, a little g, knowing good and evil. See, Satan tempted Eve to do what God said not to do. To eat, to eat of the tree. Okay? And Satan comes along and tells you, you do contrary to what God said, your eyes will be open. And you will be your own God, being able to judge what is good and what is evil. And there are times when man can get it pretty good, yes. But ultimately, man is incapable of judging righteously on a perfect basis. Perfect righteousness, perfect judgment. Man is incapable of it, okay? We get close to righteous judgment, yes we do. Sometimes, yes. But ultimately, I mean look at today. Okay, with the sodomite agenda, with the pride thing, and this retarded, woke thing. Okay? You look at it. Look at the governments today. Alright? Evil is called good. And good is called evil. Why is that? Because you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? And see, you atheists are of your father the devil. In Isaiah chapter 14, okay, and, I, and saints, you know this one. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. This is Satan talking, okay? Satan right here uh, in these verses, okay? Uh, uh, Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's what Lucifer means. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Here's what Satan says of himself. Satan talking of himself. This is what it is. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will exalt, I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend, go up in heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be my own God, knowing good and evil. Okay? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 
I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's what Satan says in his heart. That's what you atheists say in your heart. That's what every lost person says in their heart. I will be like the Most High. Okay? Satan talking. See, you atheists, when you're talking, you are talking as your father, the devil. But verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And in Ezekiel chapter 28, saints, you know this, but we're going over this because uh, this is specifically for you atheists. <laughs> okay? Ezekiel 28 verses 15 on verse 18. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Now see, in Ezekiel chapter 28, God is referencing on to Satan. Okay, you'll say, well, he's talking to Tyrus. Uh, the one who was in control of Tyrus was Satan. God is addressing Satan. Okay, he's talking about Satan. Okay, And Satan was perfect. In the day that he was created. Satan is a created being, just like mankind is a created being. Okay? Alright? You, you get it? Okay? But, by the, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. What was the iniquity of Satan? Well, we kind of already looked at it, but let's touch on it a little bit more. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. See, that's the thing. Satan is one of the most beautiful creations God ever created. He is. Hollywood, Satan through Hollywood and the Jesuit order and stuff like that, they want you to believe in uh, something Satan isn't with the stigmata and the horns and all that stuff, okay? Uh, no, Satan is beautiful, gorgeous. Why do you think sin is so appealing to the flesh? Okay? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom, thy wisdom, okay, by reason of thy brightness. And Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light, okay? I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, that shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And John chapter 8, verse 44, just one verse, dear atheist, okay? Like I said, I have encountered atheists who I, 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 I have respect for them. They're lost, going to hell. But um, I have encountered some atheists who I give more respect than a Christian. Okay? I, I do, because of obvious arguments. And we'll, we'll talk about that. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Uh, he was a murderer from the beginning. We looked at it. Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Murderer from the beginning. Okay, yea, hath God said. First recorded words out of the serpent's mouth. Satan was, yea, hath God said. Yes. Yea, hath God said. Okay? Let's continue. All right. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Ye shall be like the Most High, taken by your own wisdom and your own beauty, right? What is the molecular makeup of so-and-so, like asking all these scientific questions, or so-called, you know? It's like, okay, by the words of man, okay? Making yourself uh, something that you're not, because you can use fancy-schmancy words? <laughs> yeah, okay. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Dear, dear atheist. Dear atheist. Okay. You, you lie. 
You do believe in a God. You do. Yourself. You are of your father, the devil. Okay? All right, you are. All right, you are. I don't, I don't believe that. That doesn't matter. You are of your father, the devil. Okay? You are your own God. You are your own standard for judgment. Okay? You. Not the Lord or his perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version. And see, Muslims and atheists will bring up Bibles, how they contradict. Yes, they do. But see, this is the perfect one. This is the right one, the authorized version. Okay? All right? Psalm 113. Now see, God created all things. Okay? God made you. Look, atheist, okay? Dude, it doesn't matter if you want to believe that or not. Okay? God made you. Okay? We are descended from Adam. Okay? And we are in the kindreds that were dispersed after the flood. Okay? But everybody traces back to Adam. Okay? We talked about this in the previous video. Okay? About Adam's sin has gone to all. And we talked about that in the previous video, which will be in the description box. Okay? God created you. Man was created from dirt. Okay? Your belief on that in and of itself is, irre is irrelevant because when you die, you are going to stand before the Lord. Okay? He made you. It doesn't matter if you want to believe that or not. It really doesn't. Because when you die, you are going to go before the one who created you. Uh, you you're going to tell him that he didn't create you? Whoo! <laughs> good, good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck. And you know what, brethren? I'm sure at the great white throne of judgment, uh, some of those who have been in hell burning for centuries now, uh, they're going to get before the Lord filled with anger. and rage. I don't deserve to be in hell. It's your fault, brother. Bye. Okay. Psalm 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens, who is like unto the Lord, our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? God the Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God the Father, made of a woman, okay, meaning that he was uh, came into this world born of a woman, okay, talked about this in the previous video, okay, was subject to the flesh in ways that he had to go to the bathroom. He had pimples, okay. He had, who knows if he had scars or stuff like that, okay. But see, the flesh itself was sinful. Okay, we, we discussed this in the previous video, okay? So God in flesh, okay, was subject to the things of that flesh, but yet not tempted, because God cannot be tempted to do evil. But what can be tempted? The flesh that God was in, okay? That's how that works. Watch, watch the previous video where we get into that. But see, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, he was uh, God manifest in the flesh, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. Okay? Meaning, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Alright? God was manifest in the flesh. Yes. Absolutely. Okay? The Father in flesh. Alright? Okay, let's continue. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth, lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. 
Praise ye the Lord. Okay? Now let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43. We are looking at this to establish unto you that God is God. He claimed to be the only one. Okay? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And see, Christianity uh, today is not exclusive, is it? They say, well, you know, there, there may be other paths to heaven or whatnot. Okay? And see, that's the thing. Jesus Christ of the Scriptures is exclusive. Okay? God is exclusive. All right. And see, the atheist will see the Christian behaving like the world or taking on to themselves things that they ought not. And the Muslim and the atheist are like, dude, what, what are you doing? Aren't you supposed to be separate than that? Well, you know, God, the word, you know, you know, we're not supposed to judge people. And then even the atheist will be like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. It's like, see, Christianity today is comes at you with the what? God loves you argument, right? God loves you. One of the dumbest uh, 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 things that, has, that Satan has done. But see, people fall for that. And see, the Muslim, the atheist, rightly says, okay, you're telling me God loves me unconditionally, but God is going to send me to hell? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. God loves you. There will be a video where we go over that in the description box for you. Okay? Check that out. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, does it? No. And when you see Christians, oh, God loves you unconditionally, the atheist is like, wait a minute. And then they go to the arguments that we're going to bring up about, okay, God is love, right? And, and God, you know, loves unconditionally. Well, how do you explain God's extermination in the flood. How do you explain uh, the Amalekites? How do you explain God killing men, women, and children? How do you explain that? From Christianity telling you God loves you unconditionally. Right? Atheist? Right? 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 Yes! It doesn't make sense, does it? We're going to talk about this. Okay? Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 43 but first, got to establish to you, God is God. Okay? There is no other God but our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? There's only one name given unto men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Not Yahashahua or Ye Yeshua or Yahashawashi or whatever. No, it's Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, Yeshua uh, Hamashiach. Okay? Whatever. It's Jesus Christ. Jehovah sa saves. Christ, the anointed one. Okay? It's only one name. But let, let's continue. Isaiah 43, verses 8 on verse 13. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. That's a reference unto those of us, I mean, for our instruction in righteousness, people who believe on the Lord, and the world calls us deaf and not being able to see. Okay? Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and shew us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, Neither shall there be after me. Okay? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is an exclusive statement excluding everything else except he himself. Here, the same thing. And see, that, see, that's the thing. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. That's another thing, atheists. And Muslims rightly attack, okay? The satanic, Catholic, Egyptian, Babylonian teaching of the <coughs> Trinity, okay? The Trinity is satanic. One God made up of three persons? But yes, one God? It's nonsense. You're right, it's nonsense. 
Okay? But the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. What changed? How God deals with man. God himself doesn't change. We're going to look at that, but let's continue, okay? <clears throat> yes. Verse 11. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have shewed, when there was no strange little G God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, for the day was, I am he. And our Lord says, unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What does that mean? Dude, if Jesus is not the Father, uh, what Jesus are you believing on? The second, the second one? Uh, and look what finger that is, by the way. Okay? That's what Satan is doing to you Trinitarians. Okay? He, the one in the middle? So, the second of three gods that make one god? It's, a little, it's nonsense. Okay? Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Hinder it. Okay? Isaiah 45, 5 on to verse 7. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God, there is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. The atheist, you have breath in your lungs today, because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? You have, you know, the light in the eyes, you, you have life, because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? See, man has brought upon himself a lot of this evil because man has gone against God. And God doesn't want a robot. You have to make the right choices. God has given, in his power, has given man the choice to choose yea or nay, life or death. Okay? See, that's what you atheists don't like to in, uh, put into the narrative that man has free will. You have the free will to be the atheist that you claim to be. And just imagine your shock when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, interesting that they, he, they says the west, that there is none be beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Oh, he creates evil. We'll get to that. Okay? Oh, and while we're in uh, Isaiah 45, let's look at verses 18 and 19. Thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He informed it to, he, excuse me, he, he formed it. To be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Why did God make me? Well, because he wanted to. Revelation 4.11. Because he wanted to. Okay? He's the potter. Okay? We're the clay. We're made out of dirt. Okay? Clay is dirt. Alright? I have not spoken in secret. See, that's the thing. You, you people, you're going to die go to the great white throne of judgment, you're not going to be able to look at the Lord and say, I did not know. It's not going to happen. Well, what about the kids? What about the babies? Uh, the thing of the age of accountability? Yes, the age of accountability is not in Scripture worded as such. But a 10-year-old generally doesn't have the capacity to understand the magnitude of what it means to be a sinner against God. Okay? There comes a time, depending on the Lord and the child, when that child is going to understand, oh, this is evil. This is sin against the Lord. I've sinned against the Lord. And once a child is aware of that, they are no longer in, in uh, um, innocent, er, uh, innocent ignorance, if you will. Ignorance is not knowing. Because an infant, a baby who dies, he's going to be with the Lord. Because they, they don't have the capacity. Okay? A lot of people like to argue that, mostly Calvinists, and stay away from them devils, okay? But, 
I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. But, as we saw, Satan, ye shall be as gods, no good of evil. The only one who declares truly what is right and what is wrong is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And he has given that testimony in his authorized version of the scriptures, King James Version. Here it is. Want to know what's right and wrong? Here it is. You want to know the truth? Here it is. You don't want to take that? You don't want to believe that because you want to be your own little God? That's on you. That's on you, boy. Okay? Now, Isaiah 46. Bell bowed down. Nebo stupid. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Their carriages were heavy loaded. They are a burden to the weary beasts. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden. But themselves are gone into captivity. All the false gods of man. Bel, uh, Babylon. Okay, The Babylonian religion, which is Catholicism, Egyptian uh, religion, and of course Babylon itself. Okay, Let's continue. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. Hey, and this is what the atheist does. To whom will ye liken me? Well, hold your place here. We already saw whom these atheists and these people who want to worship uh, the false Christ, okay, Satan, uh, we know, you know where he says, To whom will ye liken me? Psalm 50, verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. To whom will ye liken me? Yourself? Atheist, you are your own God. <laughs> To whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? And see the atheist. The audacity of why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? <laughs> Overlooking the genocides of Rwanda. I think it was. Rwanda. The Holocaust. And all the things of man and war. Okay? All right? And then they like to bring up Catholicism. Okay? Read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and you see how Satan's church, Catholicism, has attacked and killed the body of Christ in the millions. In the millions. Okay? And when the atheist goes to that to point out, well, how Christians have murdered in the millions, they're right. But they're calling Christians Catholics. And Catholics are Christians because Christian was a term given on to the saints by them. Oh, but that doesn't matter, does it, right? right let's continue. <clears throat> they lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith. And he maketh it a little G God. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him. And they set him in his place, and he standeth. From his place shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him. Yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this, and shew yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end. The book of Revelation. From the beginning. Genesis means beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, 
the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off. And my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross. Ultimately, that is what that's a reference on too. Okay? God is God. But see what has happened. Exodus chapter 23. Okay? Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Verses 20 on to verse 25. Okay? Exodus chapter 23. Verses 20 on to verse 25. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, in chapter 20, we read, let's read this first, beg your pardon, okay, verses 1 on to verse 6, all right, now uh, we read this uh, a little later, but we're reading it now, okay, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt, thou shalt have no other gods before me, now, remember, Okay, we just saw too that other gods are like little statues and stuff like that, molten images. But what was Satan's lie in the Garden of Eden? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Remember, an idol is not just a Marian statue or a Buddha statue. Yes, that is part of it. But an idol is anything that takes the place of God. And when you think that you can know perfect judgment like God does, what's the idol there? Come on, you know. Come on, you're not that stupid. You're not that stupid. You may be that ignorant, willfully ignorant, not wanting to know the truth, which I count stupidity, but you're not that stupid. What's the idol there? Right, let's continue. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Like heaven above, like the stars, or the sun. Baal worship, you know. The Catholics with their perfectly round, sun-shaped uh, Baal cookie. Okay? Alright? Or that is in the earth beneath. Mankind. Worshipping men, worshipping flesh. Or that is in the water under the earth. Fish, the fish god, Dagon. You know, when the Pope turns his head, his little thing that he wears on his head is like, has a, looks like a fish head. The Jesus fish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Jealous. We'll get to that later. Okay? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Okay? Now go back to Exodus chapter 23. Let's read here. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Now you got to remember, under the law, this dispensation, eternal security was not there. Eternal security is when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name, and he saves you, he seals you with himself, the Holy Ghost. That seal until the day of redemption the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. You have got the Father living in you if you come to the Lord on his terms and he seals you, okay? You are his. You understand? Okay? That was not there in this dispensation. Eternal security was not there, okay? 
The Holy Ghost, the Lord, could come and go, come and go within a believer under this dispensation. Eternal security was not there. Okay? you got to remember that. All right? Let's continue. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee into, bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Get rid of them. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Okay? Now, Joshua 24. Now, what is this talking about? Okay? God's mercy, God's grace, God's favor. Okay? Grace is favor. Mercy is a kindness, if you will. Okay? Talked about that in another video, that which will be in the description box for you. Okay? Writing that down so I don't forget. Okay? This was a dispensation where, under the law, okay, where the law was prescribed and animal sacrifice was there to cover sins. Okay? There's God's mercy. God favored. God chose the law for this dispensation. Like today, in this dispensation, he chose the way of the cross, okay? God's grace, God's favor was in the way of the cross. God's favor was in the law. And through the law, you get the animal sacrifices and the dietary requirements and stuff like that. Animal sacrifices, the blood to cover sins, not wash away sins, okay? All right? All right? That's what this is talking about. See, man in and of himself, see, he gave the Ten Commandments, right? And hey, even you atheists know because don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't covet. Right away, uh, some of you atheists, well, I, I covet all the time. Hey, I've, yeah, I've lied. Okay, yeah, I've stolen, I've cheated. Yeah. See, God is perfect. And God's perfect requirements for man was the Ten Commandments. And then the atheist, well, why would God give us something that he knows that we couldn't keep? Atheist, do you, do, do you see your argument right in front of your face? To show you that you couldn't depend on yourself. To show you that at your best, you couldn't live up to God. But that, well, he's just cruel. No. No. Under the law. He gave the law. Okay. That was his grace and his mercy. Two different things. One has aspects within the other, but remember grace and mercy are two different things in the description box. We're not going to get off on that, okay? But, under the law, he gave the law. Okay? You sin, you had to go to the, the priest and he'd offer the animal sacrifice, the blood and whatnot, to cover sins, okay? Alright? In this dispensation, it is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? Alright? See, man cannot attain unto God. Okay? But God in His mercy has made a way for you to escape His coming wrath. Hence, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The shedding of blood. The shedding of the blood of God. Okay? Alright? If God was as cruel as you atheists want him to be, he wouldn't have given you a way out. But see, here's the thing. You don't want the way out. You want to come up, you want to boot the door out of the way and go up your own way. You're a thief and a robber there, son. Okay? All right? Joshua chapter 24. So, and you got to remember, within this dispensation, okay, Eternal security was not there. The law was given. Okay? Someone sinned. Okay? Someone sinned. Alright? And you, you bring up about before the law and what, what not like that. That was also a different dispensation. Okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. But see, within every dispensation, God's favor 
God's grace is there in whatever he has chosen for that dispensation. Okay? Uh, in the Garden of Eden, it was works. Don't eat from the tree. Well, guess what? They blew that. In the patriarchal period, God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to establish the Hebraic line, the Hebraic line that came out of Shem, where eventually Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, would come from. Okay? He chose. He was choosing the Hebraic line during that uh, period. Okay? He chose the law. He chose the cross. Okay? But in, in Joshua, chapter 24, verses 19 on to verse 25. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he hath done you good. Okay? See, God is perfect. God is holy. The Ten Commandments. Man cannot attain to what God has prescribed. And he gave us those to show you, to humble you, to take your legs out from under you because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? See, that's the thing. You think you are your own God. You are your standard of truth. But see, God's standard of truth, man cannot attain to. But yet, see, in his mercy and in his grace, he gave the law. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, in his grace and his mercy, Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for your sins. It is finished. He has a specific way in order to attain that forgiveness. Okay? But see, the reason why you need his forgiveness from someone you want to call a mass murderer is because he made you. That's the short answer. You know, when you encounter one of these guys, the short answer is, well, he made you and he has every right to be angry at you because you are rejecting him and the people that you call that you are uh, fixing to him as being a mass murderer, murderer onto, those were people that were contrary to the Lord in the first place, made their choice, and were doing contrary and attacking God's people. More on that in a little bit, okay? All right? See, atheist, he made you. In that alone, it doesn't matter what your belief is, because when you die, you are going to go and stand before him to give an account of yourself. What matters is if you go to him for his forgiveness, then you ain't going to go to hell. Okay? And more, and that, let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Let's continue in Joshua here. Verse 21. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Choice. Okay? And, yes. Now therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. And Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. So, God in the Old Testament here, under the law, Okay? gave them the Ten Commandments, which man cannot keep perfectly. And he established a sacrificial system. But see, he did that to show you that you are incapable of saving yourself and that you cannot know perfectly what is good and what is evil like God does. Okay? You understand? All right? Now, go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 1. Habakkuk, chapter 1. All right. Habakkuk chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And, O mighty God, 
thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth, devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? And what do we say to that? God is not willing that any man should perish, but that all might come to repentance. More on that in a bit. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. Okay? Verse 14. Uh, let's read verse 13 again. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? And makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them? They take up all, they take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, that which is not God. See? Because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Shall they, therefore empty, shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nations? And what does Satan offer any of you? It's like, all this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be like the Most High, taken in your own beauty and your own brightness. You are of your father the devil. See how this works? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This is 1 on verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on verse 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, not knowing better, not knowing, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized. Form of I being identified therewith. Okay? And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual capital R, rock that followed them, and that rock, capital R, was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these were our examples. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15 verse 4. Okay? Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, worshipping a statue or worshipping yourself. I don't worship myself. You are your own standard of judgment. Okay? You are your own standard of judgment. You decide what is good and what is evil. Hence, you are your own God. Okay? You're not going to get away from that. You're not going to go in circles around. You are your own God, atheist. You are your own God. You believe in a God. Yourself. Yes, you do. You lie. You say you don't. You do. Okay? Hence, neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither Murmur ye. <laughs> Smack yourself too, pal. <laughs> As some of them also murmur, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore... Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. Lest he fall, oh, atheist. You think, you're, you think you're your own God. You think you got it all figured out. But you're ridiculous. 
<laughs> but galaxy far, far away. You call uh, you call me crazy because God created the heaven and the earth. But yet you're the one who believes millions and billions and trillions of years ago <laughs> nothing exploded. That nothing was like a the point of a pen there, some nonsense. Nothing exploded. And over millions and billions and trillions of years from a piece of snot out of water from a fish to an ape to mankind you call me crazy you call me crazy you do <laughs> okay and uh, and also too now the importance of what we just looked at is what we mentioned what I mentioned a little earlier go to the book of Hebrews okay Hey, and by the way, if you are following me along in the authorized version and you are not a saint of the church of the living God, uh, just pause the video to keep up, okay? That's what, that's what you do. That's what I do when I'm watching one of the brethren, okay? Hebrews 13, just one verse. Verse 8. See, and here's the thing. And here's where the atheist gets the Christian. Because the Christian is giving to them a Christ who is not. God loves you unconditionally, right? God's not angry at you, right? And then the atheist will be like, in the Old Testament, it's like, dude, what about this? You're telling me it doesn't make sense. See, here's the thing, atheist, okay? God's love is for you at the cross. You have to go the way he prescribed to the cross. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. Okay? Very simple. The hard part is getting over yourself. God has called the way of the cross. Okay? If you reject the true gospel and you don't want to go that way, God's wrath is for you. Okay? God does not love present tense the sinner who rejects Christ and the word of his testimony. Okay? God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? And that's why the atheist, like you heard at the beginning, that little kid, that whatever guy from an uh, invisible mass murderer. Okay? That other Christian, well, God loves you. Of course the atheist and the Muslim is going to dismantle that. And Satan has set it up to do that, to make the faith that was once delivered unto the saints to look like a joke. And Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That's why the atheist destroys Christianity most of the time. Okay? But, here's the thing. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay? And also go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Just, just, just one verse. Malachi chapter 3. That's the last book of the Old Testament before Matthew. Okay? Malachi chapter 3. Just one verse. Verse 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. But now you atheists are like, well, dude, there obviously something has changed. You're right. You're right. See, this is what is called rightly dividing the word of truth. You have Christians who will tell you it's faith alone. Just believe from Genesis onto Revelation. Or you have someone who like try to get cute. It's through grace, by grace through faith, from Genesis onto Revelation. That's a lie. And atheists and even Muslims can figure that one out. Because you read the the uh, the account in Genesis, the Garden of Eden. What was the condition in the Garden of Eden? Don't eat from the tree. They saw God. Okay, they saw God in the Garden of Eden. The voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless he has a body? Brilliant, isn't it? Okay, they saw God. You don't need faith when you can see it. I don't need faith to believe in this pad of paper. Okay? I can't see the Lord today. But see, 
See? When he comes back at his second coming, the kingdom of heaven, okay? You're going to see Jesus sitting on a throne, that's east, at Jerusalem. Okay? You're going to see him. All right? And and let's let's remember one verse, Romans chapter 11, just one verse, verse 1, okay? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can't see the Lord. You want to see evidence of his work? Look at yourself if you can stand the sight in the mirror. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? This isn't rocket science. Here, atheist. Okay? But see, what you guys do, you're attacking what is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And more power to you. Because that's what Satan has given. Okay? All right? But see, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. What has changed? How God deals with man. Okay? The very first dispensation of Scripture was all work. All works. Don't eat of the tree. They did. They blew it. Okay? All right? Right there shows you that when the Christian says, it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation, right there, it's a lie. What they're saying to you, it's a lie. What changes in the dispensation is how man is made right with God. Okay? Yes! Salvation changes in the dispensation. Okay? Under the law, you have to keep the law. Today, it is by grace through faith. You believe you have faith on the finished work of, of Christ on the cross. Okay? Salvation changes in the dispensation, but God himself doesn't change. Okay? Very simple. Very simple. Psalm 103. God does not change. The way he deals with mankind does. And when you got and I I've I've seen this in videos, these atheists will destroy Christians, especially when they are not using the right uh, the scriptures, okay? They're using a Bible. These athe atheists will destroy these Christians. Especially when they come with well, it's faith alone from John. And the atheists who doesn't believe? They rightly, it's like, dude, this, what you're saying to me doesn't make sense. That's because they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. They're most likely not saved in the first place themselves. Okay? But Psalm 103, verses 14 on to verse 19. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. We're, we're made out of dirt. We're made out of dirt. Okay, and see, like at the beginning of this video, you heard that guy, why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? See, that guy was elevating himself above God. Okay, that's what he was doing. Okay, but mankind, man, we're dirt. Okay? As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower that of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Okay, are we reading on to verse 19? Or is that, yeah, verse 19. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. See, atheists, you are going to give an account of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you want to believe that or accept that is irrelevant. It, it, I mean, it truly is. It is truly irrelevant. That's what's going to happen. It would do you well to search the script. Come, let us reason together, you and I. Okay, you got to get over yourself. You are not God. You are, you do think you are God because you are your own standard of judgment. Okay? You are your own God. Shut up! You are your own God. Get over yourself. And until that happens, things ain't looking good for you. Okay? Now, what is happening is in 2 Peter chapter 3, just one verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, you know, well, well, why does God allow all this suffering, right? God has given to man 
the ability to choose free will and you see what man has done with what God has given not that God doesn't have the power to intervene but see first Peter, uh, second Peter chapter 3 excuse me verse 9 just one verse you're in the wrong place Brad. second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 one verse the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance God wants all men to be saved he does but see <laughs> writing this down okay for a link for the description box not everybody is going to come the way the Lord has prescribed and that's where Satan with all this fake stuff has come in okay with all these yea hath God said booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way okay God has prescribed a, a specific way to attain his salvation okay and it's not that you're attaining it by anything you're doing like a work okay nothing like that no you got to come to him broken of your self-righteousness you got to get over yourself that you're a good person that you're righteous and that you are better than God that you were worth dying for that you're something special you're nothing you're dirt okay like the grass you're gonna perish okay you're here for you dance your you stretch your stuff upon the stage to be heard of no more it is the tale of an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing man is nothing but see God so loved past tense that he gave his only begotten son okay past tense okay God's love is for you at the cross but you gotta go the way that he has prescribed not go some other way and that other way Satan has come with all kinds of stuff you got a smorgasbord right and it and a bunch of it is and they put the this whole conglomerate and they call it Christian okay okay and also too in Micah chapter 7 just one verse Micah chapter 7 just one verse Micah chapter 7 verse 18 okay Micah chapter 7 verse 18 who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity see and that's the thing a mass murderer okay we're gonna look at that here coming up pretty quick okay he created you and when a people, a nation, or whatever, goes past the point of no return to where their mere existence is a detriment to his holiness. If God, God, okay, we who love the Lord hate evil, okay? And evil cannot exist in the presence of God. But evil is going on right now. Yes, it is. For judgment, okay? Yes, it is. But see, man has chosen that and God would have all men to be saved and he is being very merciful right now but see ultimately who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity see God would be this unmerciful God who pulls a wing off of a fly God that you atheists want to believe if he didn't give you a way to escape it but see that's the thing Atheist, you're right. Hey, look at me. Come on. You're right. Don't don't believe the lie of Christianity. You're right. It's it's a fallacy. It's a joke. Christianity is not the faith that is once delivered unto the saints. Okay? You're right. Go ahead and mock it. Go ahead and do whatever. Go for it. I am not telling you of Christianity. Okay? I am giving I am proclaiming to you. Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, of the authorized version of the Scriptures. Faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That is what I'm talking to you about. Not Christianity with all the lies that even you guys can, can debunk. Okay? Alright? Okay? But God would be this unmerciful, murdering whatever if he didn't give you a way out. And he has 
the cross. But see, there's a specific way of the cross. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord. Brokenness, contrition, and fear. And see, Christianity, how are you supposed to love someone you're afraid of? Shh, don't listen to them. Okay? Don't listen to that. You, you atheists, you got brains enough to be like, oh, you telling me God loves me, but what about... You're right. You're right about that. I'm telling you, unless you go the way he has prescribed, the way of the cross, hey, as you figured it out, his wrath is for you, his love is not for you. He would rather you to come to the cross. Yes, he would. But not everybody is going to. He would be this unmerciful murderer if he didn't give you a way out. But he has given you a way out. And it's your fault and your problem if you don't want to go the way he prescribed. That's on you. Because salvation, unlike what the Calvinist tells you, salvation is not at gunpoint. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Yes, the Lord would much rather be merciful. He would! And not everybody is going to go the way he has prescribed. And hence, because he is a perfect God, his judgment must be perfect. Hence, what does that mean? He's got to destroy evil. Okay? Ezekiel chapter... And this is where a lot of these Christians... And, and I saw an atheist, and it's like, uh, it's like, wow, you dismantled that Christian. And because the Christian was coming at, well, God loves you unconditionally, and they go to, where? Ezekiel 18, which was another dispensation where eternal security wasn't there in the first place. Warning number one. But, Ezekiel 18, verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Said the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. Now, return from his ways. That's what? Repent. And see, what the Christian does, well, repent is from going from unbelief to belief. You, thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe. The repentance that is being talked about is not going from unbelief to belief. A, Muslims, atheists can dismantle that quite easily. The repentance is you're not a good person. You're dirt. You're nothing. You weren't worth dying for. God isn't looking at you. Oh, I got a prize there. No. That's the repentance. That's the turning. Okay? Oh, and also, verses 29 out of verse 32. Okay? Yet, said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O oh, house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Think about that. Think about that. Okay? Today, these people who, well, these atheists who call God a mass murderer, they are more willing to condone evil, such as the sodomite agenda, the uh, uh, LGBTQ thing, and the, the wokeism stuff. Okay? I, I, they're more willing to condone that. They're more willing to condone murder via abortion. And then they'll say, well, look at your God. Huh? Huh? You see this, this argument of them? See, they are calling evil good and good evil. Where God calls evil evil and he does something about it. And that's where they don't like that. Okay? Because the atheists, they are their own God. They are their own idol. And you are your own standard of judgment. See, us saints of the Church of the Living God, here's our standard. Perfect standard KJV with every mwah, pun intended there. That's a channel uh, that I recommend. Okay? This is the perfect standard. We are not our own standard. Here's our standard. The authorized version. You atheists, you're your own standard. You Christians, the Jesuits who got the $110,000 piece of paper on their wall from their Jesuit cemetery schools, they're your standard. Okay? And they say, well, that's not fair. God's not, God's not fair to kill those 
wicked people who are introducing sin and wickedness into something that God wants to remain pure. And they say, well, that's not fair. Oh, house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways equal? Are, are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. They don't like to tell they, And they, they, you know, like I've seen this, you see this with all these easy believers and devils. Who, okay, scriptural repentance is repenting of your self-righteousness. They twist it and say going from unbelief to belief. Fallacy. Okay, repent and turn from yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Now, a dispensational difference here from all your transgressions. Okay? Different dispensation. Okay? That's why this is not <laughs> the best place to go, these Christians go to, and this is why you atheists can, and Muslims can dismantle the Christian with the fake God loves you unconditionally. You can come to this. Okay? This is under a different dispensation where eternal security was not there. You cannot turn from all your iniquities even if you tried. Even if a gun were pointed at your head. And you atheists know that. The turning that you are doing from dear atheists is exactly what we saw at the beginning of this video from that, with that statement. You put yourself above God. Granted, you are comparing yourself to a God given to you from Satan, but nonetheless, you are still putting yourself above God. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Now see, that's the dispensational difference. Okay? This was another dispensation where eternal security was not there. The dispensation is different. But I have seen atheists and Christians talk about this before. And the Christian was with the God loves you unconditionally. And the atheist is like, what, 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 what about this? You know, wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay. Okay. And then they go to other parts of scripture and they dismantle it because God does not love you unconditionally. <gasps> if you come to him on his terms, and he saves you, yes! Yes! Remember, Jesus Christ is exclusive. Uh-huh. Okay? Yes! Then that love is there. But if you don't go the way he said to go, boot the door and climb up some other way or flat out reject it, um, his wrath is for you. Uh-huh. Okay? Okay? Now, this thing about God is jealous. This is another thing. It's like, hey, jealousy. Oh, as if you're not. But see, godly jealousy is something else than your envy. Envy and jealousy. Do you know the difference? Our dear brother, uh, and I have this one written down, uh, did a good video about that, about envy and jealousy, that they're two different things. Okay? But this thing about jealousy, go now to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. God is a jealous God. And see, these, <laughs> these people, it's like, well, that's a, you know, jealousy, you know, he's a jealous God. Look, again, dear atheists, God made you. He created you. He created you because, number one, he wanted to. He created you because he wants to have fellowship with you. And, and I've heard, you know, when I've said that to some atheists, it's like, oh, he's very full of himself then, isn't he? It's like, and you're not, look at you. you. You're accusing my father of the very thing that you are. But yet he humbleth himself to behold the things on earth. Okay? Uh, listen, pal. Okay? You are putting yourself above God. Okay? I have run into a couple atheists before where we have, you know, have had converse like that, not, you know, over the phone, but, you know, email and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, at the end of it, it's like, you know, I don't believe what you believe. Okay, I, I you know, the one guy's like, you know, I respect what you're saying, but Brad, I don't want to believe on your God. 
Fine, that's on you. That's on you. And you know what? He at least admitted that I don't want to believe on your God. He would rather believe in himself. And that was it. It's like, hey, you've made your choice. You're going to hell. And he was aware of that. That's the thing. You watch this, if you can make it this far, you know, we got a lot more to go. You're not going to be ignorant. You're going to stand before the Lord and say, you were giving testimony of the truth when you rejected it. And you, you guys that think you're all about the truth. Your truth, right? See, truth cannot be mended and bended and whatever. But according to Christianity, it can. And that's where the atheist and the Muslim thrive in making the theater of all this look like a joke. Exodus 34, verses 10 on verse 16. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The key to thyself lest thou make a covenant, listen to this, make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest there be a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, and break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. He made you to have fellowship with Him. He made you because He wanted to make you. And what He is rightfully deserved as Creator, as Father, you're going off and giving it to the devil. I'm not a father. If I had a son or a daughter who loved the devil more than God, who loved a stranger more than the one who brought them out, uh, in this world, uh, yeah, I'd be a little jealous, wouldn't I? Wouldn't you? That's what that means. God has every right to be jealous over what He created because they didn't make the right choice. And see, He doesn't want them to be a robot. He wants you to make the right choice. But yea, hath God said, Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make their sons go a horn after their gods. Verse 17. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. And see, that's the thing. That evil that these people equate to God being a mass murderer were there to take away the people from what the Lord wanted them to do. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're looking in the Old Testament quite a bit because it is within the Old Testament that a lot of these atheists will go to to try to prove this very fact, but you don't know what you're talking about. Deuteronomy 7, verses 1 on to verse 4. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, 
nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. God made you. He's the potter. He has every right to do with you as he sees fit. Okay? He has given you free will to choose. But when you choose contrary to him and make it your goal to do everything contrary to him, speak against him and attack his body? You know, when you buy something, it's yours. You have every right to do with whatever it is. You make something, it's yours. You have every right to do with it as you see fit. But see, the atheists, they think they're better than God. <laughs> okay? Okay? In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses uh, 3 and verse 6. Understand, therefore, this day that the Lord thy God, he, the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them. He shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Okay, quickly. Um, quickly usually is uh, alive. Destroy them alive. Kill everybody. Okay? Yes. Why? Because those ones that the Lord, you know, that people, these atheists, like, well, he was a mass murderer. Those would have taken the heart away from his people whom he sanctified, whom he wanted to be an example unto everybody. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? Speak not thou in thine heart. After that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, My righteousness, the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness, or for thy uprightness, nor, or excuse me, not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thy heart, thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness. For thou art a... For thy righteousness. For thou art a stiff-necked people. And see, a statement like, why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? That guy is saying that he's better than God, more holy, more righteous than God. Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that, pal. Okay? Good luck with that. Okay? And see, what we're looking at is the reason why God did all this is because those would bring in evil to what he has sanctified. And you can't have fellowship with darkness. Okay? You can't have it both ways. It's either or. Okay? Solomon tried to have the best of both worlds. It can't work. Okay? Deuteronomy 12, verses 29 unto 32. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their, in their land, take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods, sacrificing unto devils. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. The modern equivalent to that is abortion. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it.
Thou shalt, verse 31 again, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. And oh, oh, the paganism of Christianity. You know, the 25th worship. Okay? The Astarte worship. The worship of a building. It's pagan. God hates that. And see, what God hates people that have chosen contrary to him and are continually walking in that. God hates that. O oh, atheist, is not the Lord Jesus Christ fair and you unfair? You would defend the right of the murderer to live. If you repent and get saved, you will live in eternity like Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer, I believe, is in heaven. Absolutely. And some of these Christians, it's like, you think Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven and you think I'm lost? Yeah. I'm better than Dahmer! You are your own God. There it is right there. There it is right there. These easy believism heretics. I'm saved because I just believe. You are your own God. Okay? Alright? Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now see, the Lord already knows. He's all, he knows everything. Okay, uh, Mr. Lionheart. The Lord Jesus Christ knows everything. Okay, but who is he proving that to? We are told to examine ourselves every day, whether or not we are in the faith. We claim that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might. The Lord allows someone to come around and say, hey, let us go, let us go put up this uh, weird tree with all this weird stuff and then cause all this problem about it and say it's okay to do so. Okay? That's just that. Shh, don't go off on that. I'm just using that as an example. Okay? See, the proof there is not that God would know what we are going to do. He already knows. It's so that we can see that it's like, oh, we have a little, uh, <laughs> little divided loyalty, don't we? Okay? Verse 4. Verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Why? Because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. To thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. See. These other nations that the atheists will bring up in the Old Testament did ex was exactly that. What? Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 6 on to verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 6 on to verse 8. Your glorying is not good about people who's like uh, the equivalent is these Christians who invite the lost people among them. It's like, we're not judging you. That's it. Come to our church building. We're, we're, see, we're Christians. We're not judging you. You know, and they, they, were, uh, they were tolerating a man who was having relations with his father's wife. And they were not 
judging. They're like, no, that's when you need us. That we like we think that's kind of gross, but hey, that's when you need to come into our ranks, and that's when you need to be amongst us. That's when you need us the most. What does Paul say? Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Okay? And what are we reading to? Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and of truth. And truth. Bread of sincerity and truth. What does this mean? Oh, well, we, we kind of already referenced it. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and verse 18. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Okay? Okay? And people, and they will ask, well, why aren't why isn't God killing people today as he did under the Old Testament? Different dispensation. He deals with people differently in the dispensations, okay? God's wrath is going to be poured out on this earth for seven years after the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Y'all you, may know it erroneously as the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? That it's the redemption of the purchased possession the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? When we get redeemed, all the wrath, all the hostility of the Lord for seven years is going to be poured out on this earth. And y'all say, where's the, where's your God? Where's he, where's, why is he letting this, oh, <laughs> he's not going to, he's not letting it go. He's going to repay. See, God's not slack as you come slack. But it's long suffering. He wants everyone. He wants everyone to be safe. He does. But he knows full well because we have free will. He knows full well that not everybody is going to. And if he forced you without your will, wouldn't that make him a monster? That's why, that's why Calvinism is so dangerous, among many things. Oh, atheist, is not the Lord Jesus Christ fair and you unfair? Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 21 and verse 24. Romans chapter 11. This is going a lot quicker than I anticipated, praise the Lord. For if, for if God spared not the natural branches, talking about the Hebraic Jews, okay, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, of God, on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Brother Alexander, again, did a really good short video on this, which will be in the description box uh, for you to consider, okay? And I got that one written down too, brother. Okay? And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? And then we go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. For if God spared not the angels that sin, that sin, 
but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. What about all the millions that God killed with the flood? They were ungodly. But Noah found grace, favor in the eyes of the Lord. Like I said, the video for that will be in the description box, okay? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed it with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The day of judgment to be punished. The time of Jacob's trouble and the great white throne. Why, where's your God to to put judgment right now. <laughs> Don't worry. When it comes, you're going to wish that it never did. Mark my word, atheist. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh and the lusts of uncleanness and despise government, self-government, Presumptuous are they, self will, government, self will, self government. See that? Okay? They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Why do I need forgiveness from an invisible mass murderer? A brute beast, made to be taken and destroyed. He made his own path, and now he's going to lie. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, uh, put the Romans chapter 12 first. Romans chapter 12 because, like I said, the question is, well, why isn't God doing what he did back then today? The dispensation is different. He deals with men differently in dispensations. Salvation is different in the dispensation. Okay? Alright? Okay, but in uh, Romans chapter 12, he says verses 19 on to verse 20. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger feed him, if he thirst give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. See, under the law, they were commanded to do those things right away because number one, Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And number two, eternal security was not there. Okay? Today, eternal security. Okay? Today, these people are storing up for themselves. They're, they're digging their hole deeper. The Lord has just given them more rope to hang themselves. And when it comes time to pay up, Deuteronomy 32, verse 39 is what uh, Paul was quoting. Um, Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And that's the thing, atheist. See, you're trying to escape the inevitable. And you can live your life in that escapism all you want. But see, atheist, your belief on this doesn't matter. When you die, you're going to stand before the Lord. Okay? What matters is if you go to Him on His terms and He saves you, cleanses you of your sin and seals you with Himself, that means you are saved. Because the Lord is in you. He is salvation. Okay? You're going to give an account of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ when you die. You are dirt. What you believe on that, like I've been telling you, is irrelevant. 
That's what's going to happen. I'm not wrong. Because this isn't. This isn't wrong. This is perfect. Okay? First Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse 6 on verse 10. Okay? First Samuel chapter 2. We're, we're in this until this is done. This has got to be a two-parter, so be it. i got to put these together with the whatever, so be it. 1 Samuel t uh, chapter 2, verse 6, on verse 10. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth the, up the poor out of the dust. And lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. What are we reading to? Uh, verse uh, 10. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. Out of heaven shall the thunder, shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Of course, now that would be uh, first Saul, then David, but ultimately that is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, this whole thing, again, about, okay, go to Genesis chapter 6, okay, all right, Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 8, why did God kill all those people in the flood? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. We've covered this in several other videos. Oh, God needed to repent. <laughs> repent, grieve. See that tie-in? Okay. God regretted that he made man because of the choices man made. And wickedness, of course, with the fall of the garden and stuff like that. Okay. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Verse 8. But Noah found grace, favor, in the eyes of the Lord. Again, that would be in the description box. Okay? So, all these people that God destroyed in the flood, Thoughts of their heart were only evil continually. And people like to say, well, these atheists that believe in evolution, <laughs> that man's getting better. You stupid or something? Look at the trans thing. Look at the woke thing. Okay? Look at that. You think man's evolving, getting better? If you do, th I love you. To, enough to tell you the truth. If you think man is progressively getting better, you are stupid. Man's getting worse. Okay? The people of the flood looking up from hell at what is today, and they're like, wow, okay, we were pretty bad, but we weren't as bad as that. People of Sodom and Gomorrah that were destroyed like that. They, they see what's going on today. It's like, Oh, wow. Wish we could have thought of that, but we, we didn't even think of that. Man, it's getting worse. Okay? All right? Hence, because of that, God destroyed all those people in the flood. Okay? Exodus chapter 17. What about the Amalekites? <laughs> okay. Do you know the, what, who the Amalekites are? Okay? <laughs> Atheists? Oh, no, you only know something to attack, huh? Okay. Exodus 17, verses 8 on to verse 16 to the close of the chapter. 
Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. Why did Amalek come and fight with Israel and Rephidim? What did Israel do to them? Nothing. Amalek just came and attacked them. Because Israel is God's chosen people, even today. And here comes Amalek and attacks them. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out, choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. So each dude was on his hands so Moses could be like this when they held up his hands for him. Okay? And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai. Okay? For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Why? Because unprovoked, un anything, Amalek came and attacked Israel. Okay? That's why. Alright? Amalek hated Israel. Amalek hated God's chosen people. Satan hates the saints of the church of the living God. See how that works? Okay? Alright? And uh, Numbers 31... Numbers 31, okay? Numbers 31, verses 13 on to verse 18, okay? These are not all the examples, but see, God will kill these people. Why? So that they don't bring evil into the mist. So they don't corrupt that which he has called pure and wants to remain pure, Okay? Numbers 31, verses 13 on to verse 18. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of pure. And there was a plague among the congregation of the people. So these people were something that caused the people to go astray. Not at gunpoint, but they introduced the stuff and the people made the choice to go after this evil. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones. Why? Because they were the result of those evil people that came in to corrupt what God has chosen. See? Okay? And kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. Why? Because those people would not continue that bloodline of those that came in to corrupt what God has done, see. The line of Cain, by the way, died in the flood, okay? The, the lost tribe thing, you know, that's one of the uh, serpent seed uh, nonsense and whatnot. But, for example, Cain, the line of Cain, was exterminated in the flood. But, children of Adam, okay? Children of Adam, okay? Now, where are we reading to? To verse 18. But all the women, children that have not known man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. Okay? So why did God say to kill everybody? Because that would put out the evil, that evil that was brought in to corrupt. See? 
A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? And God, who created man, is the just judge, God, creator. He has the right to do with whatever he wants to do with what he wants to do. Okay? And he gives man freedom to choose. And when they choose and go past the point of no return, okay? And 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 5. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came out from Egypt. That's what Amalek did. Okay? Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, and slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. We already looked at it in Deuteronomy. Amalek would bring in sin. Emelech would bring in corruption. And if left to be alive, they would become an ultimate enemy to what God has chosen. Okay? Even in today's modern military-esque thing, that is a, you know, make sure you get rid of everything so it doesn't come back to haunt you. Okay? Oh, atheist. Oh, atheist. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ fair and you unfair. <laughs> you would have kept alive Hitler and just say he was misunderstood, even though he was a servant of the Vatican, right? You yourself, you probably have sympathy for the devil, that he was just a rebel angel. All the while, he himself wants to be God. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tel Aviv. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And what happens? Saul goes and fights with Amalek, but he doesn't kill them all. He keeps the best for himself. Then he makes up this thing and he's like, I did! I did do what the Lord said! And Samuel's like, then what's all this bleeding I hear in my ears? And then Saul, of course, what does he do? He blames them. Well, the, the, the people, the Adamic nature, you know. The woman thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Not taking responsibility. What does Samuel say? Verses 22 and 23. And Samuel said, At the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and as in obeying the voice of the Lord, better to obey, better, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. As thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And you atheists, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you being king. I'm not a king. Uh, you are your own God. You are as Mr. Yeah, yeah, James Hetfield says, um, you are king nothing. You are your own little king of your own petty little kingdom. You are your own God. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 44, verses 1 on the 12. This is after Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of Jerusalem. Then the survivors of the slaughter, after Gedaliah was killed by Ishmael, uh, came to Jeremiah and said, Pray the Lord our God for us. And whatever he says to you, we're going to do it. No matter what it is. They said, no matter what it is. 
Whether it's stay or go, we're going to do whatever the Lord said. Jeremiah goes to the Lord. The Lord says to Jeremiah to tell the people, uh, don't go to Egypt. Because they wanted to go to Egypt because they were scared. And they said, whatever the Lord says, we're going to do. You read about that in Jeremiah 42. Jeremiah 43. Jeremiah said, thus saith the Lord, don't go to Egypt. But you dissembled in your hearts, meaning you weren't going to do what I said anyway. And in Jeremiah 43, what do they say? They say to Jeremiah, The Lord didn't tell you to tell us not to go to Egypt, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, said it the on against us. So, they said to Jeremiah, well, You pray to the Lord, and whatever he says, we're going to do it. <laughs> Jeremiah's like, Okay. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, Don't go to Egypt. And Jeremiah says to them, Thus saith the Lord, Don't go to Egypt. What do they do? The Lord didn't say not to go to Egypt. We're going to Egypt. This is after Jeremiah 44. That's Jeremiah 42 and 43. On your own time, atheist, whoever you are, read that. The word that came to Jeremiah, oh, we're in Jeremiah 44, verse 1 and verse 12. Then we'll be done. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, which dwell at Migdol and at Tephanes and at Noph, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, Ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are desolate, are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger. In that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not, neither they, ye, nor your fathers. What's going on today? Mercy. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, don't do not this abominable thing that I hate. Warning you, hey, I hate what you're doing. Don't do this. Don't go after other gods. Don't seek how to serve them. Okay, you're not your own god. Okay? He warned them. Mercy. But they hearken not. Nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness. To burn no incense unto other gods. And see, God who is perfect, pure, holy, good, must, because of that, ultimately hate, abhor, and eradicate what is evil. Ye who love the Lord hate evil. We are to abhor that which is evil. Paul says that. And to cleave to that which is good. Okay? And what is good? And what is evil? God tells you what is good and evil. But see, you atheists, and whoever you are who are not saved, you are your own standard of judgment. You are your own God. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Wherefore my fury and mine anger was poured forth, and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Therefore now thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel. Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls, to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah to leave you none to remain and that ye provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt whither ye be gone to dwell that ye might cut yourselves off and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth Or your own enemy. You're doing it to yourself. You can't save yourself, but you are making the choice to give what is rightly deserved to God unto the devil. And 
you expect him to be okay with that? Well, Christianity tells you God loves you unconditionally. And the atheist is like, wait, wait, wait. That, like, God's, uh, okay, if, if what I'm reading here is right, and you're t what you're saying to me, Christian, is not what this is saying, so this means that must not be true. No, no, no. What Christianity is telling you is not the truth. Verse 8, And that ye provoke me unto the wrath, unto wrath, with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whither ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off, and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, and the wickedness of the kings of Judah, and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives? which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled, even unto this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, to cut off all Judah. For us today, all this evil that's going on in America, God can't, God can't let it go. He can't because he is a perfect, righteous judge. Right now, at this time, church and living God, the saints, the body of Christ are in America. That's why mercy is being shooed America. And I'm telling you, once we get out of here, once he calls us up, come up hither, he who now lives will let until he be taken out of the way, dude. America could fall quite with readily with the body of Christ still within it, yes, but the only reason why this country has been given any mercy is because of the saints, the church of the living God that is within this nation. And in any other nation under heaven. Now we'll take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed. And fall in the land of Egypt, they shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine. And they shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse. Verses 21 unto 23. The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and it came not into his mind, so that the Lord could no longer for no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed? The Lord is long suffering putting up with this disgusting America, with this disgusting world. You know when the Lord's long suffering for that ends? When he says, come up hither and the body of Christ be, gets redeemed. And then all hell's going to break loose, Jack. This world has gotten to a point where it, it's, a, it's a wonder that the Lord hasn't said, Come up hither. Look at America. Okay? So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. Why? Because ye have burned incense, and because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. The Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, has given you the way out of it. But you don't want it. And granted, you got a Christian coming to you and saying, God loves you unconditionally. And you atheists, it's like, wait a minute, that, wait, 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 God's not angry at me, 
God loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell. Right, right, right. What's going on today is evil. And see, man today, wherever you are, calls evil good and good evil worse than the testimony that we have for us in Scripture. And God in His long suffering has given you today. Now, I understand this is a long video. I understand most of you atheists probably won't make it past the first 15 minutes and leave all your comments. If you do, okay, I, I did, you know, coming back to the channel, I did block quite a few people. <laughs> I did. Don't got time, mate. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, but um, atheist, God created you. God is perfect. You are not. You need his forgiveness because you are not God. And without him, you go into hell. And it doesn't matter if you believe in hell or not. When you die, Mr. Atheist, the one that you rejected all your life, you're going to stand before him. then what do you got to say about that? 